last week. Let's get to this first. Nike announced it is finally partnering with the e-commerce giant Amazon. Now, Nike products will be directly sold on Amazon's site. This is the move that comes after the sportswear maker announced it is cutting 1,400 jobs and reducing sneaker styles, as well as concentrating their markets. Joining us now is Josh Luber, CEO of StockX. Josh, thank you for joining us today on set. Thank you for having me. It's always good when we see you in person. Agree, agree. All right, of course, big news. Nike finally selling directly on Amazon. What do you make of the news? I'm going to be honest, I don't think it's as big a deal as everyone else does. Okay. All right? It's Amazon, so it's a big deal. It's Whole Foods, it's a big deal, right? But here's the thing. The number one thing that Nike is doing here is getting a hold of authentic product, of right. its experience on Amazon. Because people have been buying Nike on Amazon for years. And uh, there's a lot of counterfeit goods that are Nike that are Amazon. So in many ways, it's almost like Nike's getting ahead of the curve to cut down on the losses that they would have been getting from there anyway. Absolutely, right? I mean, this is this is great for them. Forget about whether they're going to take share, whether it's going to come out of you know, other channels. At the mo basic level, they're taking share from the counterfeiters, right? They're gonna get there and get into the place where people are already buying and selling Nikes, but let them buy authentic Nikes from Nike. I think it's great. But do you think it will have an impact on cutting back on counterfeit goods on the Nike, I guess, I guess platform through Amazon? Well, it, on Amazon, sure, but you know, counterfeit goods are very whack-a-mole, right? They'll find another place to pop up somewhere else. Right, sure. But this is this is not a specific uh, trend, right? This is happening across the board in the sneaker industry, right? I mean, this is exactly what StockX does. We authenticate sneakers, so on the secondary market, you're getting authentic sneakers. Right. So Nike's doing well on Amazon. You hear eBay talking about this. StockX does this for secondary getting rid of counterfeit goods, it's a good thing to be doing. But this is a potentially set up then because everybody's buying so much off of Amazon anyway, instead of going to Nike.com or to you guys, this all of a sudden makes some place like Amazon the, the place to buy your sneakers now. Everybody's gonna be buying right. them Right, it's a bigger deal I feel like for, for, for Nike though than it is for Amazon because Amazon doesn't really need this extra business. Well, Amazon wants everyone's business, right? Um, there's, a, there's still a segmentation within Nike's business and um, you know, there was news that came out last week, two weeks ago, about Nike cutting down number of styles, right? About reducing their styles about 25%. This is a good example of the fact that you don't have to be selling everything all in one place. Sure. You're not going to see the very limited, the retro Jordans, the rare exclusive stuff sure. on Amazon. It doesn't need to be there, right? But for the shoes that already are there, make sure they're the right ones. Make sure you're getting it from Nike. Now, can we bring in the Amazon Prime wardrobe feature that also launched? Because if they start doing this with shoes, then there's no need for anyone to go into a shoe store anymore because they can just order the shoes to their house. They can try it on. It's kind of like Zappos, right? And that would also cut into, I guess, some of those sales too. Well, that, that gets to one of the reasons why we think that it'll be a long time before we lose brick and mortar retail entirely, yes. right? The people still do want to try on shoes. They still do want, you know, an experience, a retail experience of going in there. Perhaps maybe more so when you're a, a younger kid and you're going in there with your mother and you're trying on, it might be between this size or that size as I used to do growing up. But, you know, all of that moves much toward a more on-demand economy where you can try those things on at home. Okay. That's coming. I, I, there's a lot of shoes I want to talk to you about. I want to get to Lonzo Ball's shoe in a moment, of course, because he's such an interesting figure because he's not doing a shoe with any brand, which is really fascinating. Uh, but let's talk about the Yeezy shoe. I feel like every time we're with you, there's some sort of new Kanye West shoe that I have to get my hands on. Well, this is the beauty of being here in person with yes, you guys, right? Yes, I get to see it in the, person. Right. Tell me about so, this one. Look, this is the, the Yeezy 350 Zebra. This shoe came out in February, very limited. This was selling for as much as $1,500. $1,500, okay? Is Adidas, it because it's an exclusive model? It's, what is it? it? So first of all, it's Kanye, right? So right. Kanye drives the demand, right. but it's, it's purely supply and demand. This was limited, so it was selling for a lot of money. They re-released this. They re-released this this past weekend. Much bigger numbers. Adidas doesn't give us exact numbers, but a lot more on the market. This shoe is already down to $550 on StockX. So it's dropped by two thirds of the value. By the way, that's still two and a half times retail price, right? Right. right. It's retail so was it, originally like $220. Exactly. It? So it's still an expensive shoe, but compared to where it was at $1,500 to be down to about $500, this is an effect that happens as brands re release shoes into the secondary market. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, let's get to uh, Nike again, though, but talking about their Dunk High Momofuku, which I thought was interesting because it's not only limited, the way you actually get it is through a separate app. Completely tell us about it. Sure, well, it's a good day to be in New York City talking about this. Obviously, this is David Chang's restaurant right. group here. Um, they used, Nike used, I think for the first time, any company has used augmented reality. 
where you actually had to take your phone's camera and you had to look through the Momofuku menu to see a picture of the shoe and then you could buy it. That's the new, that's the Mama Fuku shoe? Yep. That is awesome. Yeah, so I really it, like that. This shoe. is actually, the original. it's called the Nike SB Dunk High. So it's a skateboarding shoe that's sort of a classic Nike model that they did with Mama Fuku. But, and the augmented reality part of it was even cooler. And how many pairs are released? So this one, we actually don't know how many pairs are released, but given the resale premium where it retailed for $110, it's reselling for about $220 on StockX, which means that there were certainly fewer pairs available than people were trying to buy. And I'm almost curious if everybody at every David Chang restaurant, especially Mama Fuku, is forced to wear those shoes. I would gladly submit my application if that was the case. Yes. Um, I want to now talk about Lonzo Ball. Um, I feel like he's one of the most controversial uh, individuals that was drafted in the NBA. It's largely because of his father, um, of course, Lonzo Ball was taken number two by the Lakers, his childhood team. And Lonzo Ball has not signed with anybody, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, whatever. He wanted to make his own shoe. And so he made the Z02 model, which is, looks like a Laker color right there. Tell us about this one. This is hideous. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we were first introduced to the Z02, to Lonzo Ball's shoe from Big Baller brand, uh, about a month ago when it was first announced that he was not going to sign with any of the brands and produce his own shoe. We didn't see any of the shoes at the time, right? We just saw pictures of them and it was announced, by the way, a retail price of $595. Right. And oh, almost every man. single one of his shoes, is even his sandals, were retailing for like $500. Right, right. So, and by the way, not getting delivery until November. So you can pay $600 right. today and maybe they'll ship you a pair in November. But what would have happened if Lonzo Ball was not drafted by the Lakers, that he was drafted by like, I don't know, the Sacramento Kings? Would he be making the same shoe for the Kings? Well, fortunately, I, I think they knew at that point, once uh, the Sixers traded up to get right. the first pick. That but, is, yeah. I don't know, maybe they had four or five different colorways in the back of LeVar Ball's bag at the draft that they would have pulled out. Who so knows? you would not invest in these, but you would invest in the David Chen. Oh, 100%. Edition. Maybe it's just because I'm not a very big Lonzo Ball fan, but yes, I think the I think the David Chang sneakers are amazing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Josh Lober, as always, at StockX. Thank you so much, guys.